Hello. Hello, Alpha. I get this for you. We need to start a process of trusting each other. I'm the um, head of the music section at the Siemens. One of the first conversations they had with us was that they wanted us to come together because of the year of return. But obviously, it's an event that moves around. And so, if it's a coincidence, then it's a very uh, positive coincidence for us. Like I indicated, at the core of a lot of the events that we've held this year is music. And now that we're going to the last month, as it were, this is a very nice opportunity to have not just performers, uh, but people within the whole entire music chain to meet on the platform and discuss issues. Uh, collaborators, business, distributors, uh, the artists themselves, their managers, all coming together is quite positive and we feel uh, privileged to be hosting this event in Ghana. I think it's always useful to have all the people in a room. Maybe if sometimes you can shut the room down and let's sit down and talk. How can we work together? There is a, a music talent itself and also people who benefit from the talent. Uh, radio stations, TV stations, uh, event organizers, um, a lot of pirates, piracy going on in the industry. All of these players have to sit down in a room and I think that's what Access offers. A platform where you're not just having musicians coming to lament or have uh, uh, producers coming to lament. You have the musicians there, the producers there, the distributors there, and more importantly, other collaborators who are willing to invest. I mean, if you look at what the Goethe Institute and the CMS people are doing, it shows that they have seen some something in there, and they, that is for me uh, the positive we should take out of it. Uh, we've agreed with them that we're going to do a special tour because we know that a lot of people are coming from different countries, uh, especially in Africa. So on the last day, uh, on the 30th, we have a tour packaged for the central region, taking them through Anumabu, Cape Coast, Elmina to Asenma. How do people assist? I think it's mostly for the musicians and the, the managers and co who are coming to the conference. I mean, uh, but we will see. If, if the interest is there, we could open it up. I think the first thing that probably ought to be done is to have a body strong enough and I think that was the intention for setting up the Creative Arts Council okay. that they will lead us to a point where we can have the Creative Arts Bill passed and then we have uh, the Creative Sector either as an authority or organization because sometimes I think the creative economy itself is not understood properly. Uh, people look at creativity just uh, as the people who have the talent. But talent alone will not cut it. We've had people who have talent and have not gone anywhere because they haven't had the best managers or they haven't had the best platforms to showcase their talent. And so st the first step was to have this council. And I believe working with the council, Marco Kreko Mantenko, we've started a process of trying to um, identify who the players are in the industry, not just the musicians, the people within the entire value chain. Then the next step is the bill itself, which I know has gone very far and is in Parliament now. I'm just hoping that in the next sitting of Parliament they will get this thing passed so that we can get a properly legal body. Because currently the Creative Arts Council is more like a task force, an ad hoc, and when you're dealing with things in an ad hoc manner, sometimes the issue of the budget, uh, where they source their funding and all those things, not properly defined. I believe that that for me is where we need to uh, put our energies to. And then also we need to start a process of trusting each other. I think within the creative arts itself, sometimes where I've been on the other side of uh, trying to source talents, money for uh, events and talent and most of the time people feel that artists, uh, even when you are um, sponsoring them or sponsoring their event, you don't get a benefit because they will come if, we, if they have to wear a particular brand, they will not wear it. If somebody has a uh, um, 
uh, made um, has he made such an ambassador for a program and then he comes wearing a, uh, a competitive brand I mean people are um, ambassadors for let's say some breweries and then you see them out there holding competitive things you know so we need to start a, a rethink of this thing is talent but it's also business and without that mix we will not get there We could have done better, I mean, but I mean, whenever we've gone out there or we've gotten responses from people, people are saying, you guys have marketed this thing so well outside. But I, when internally, I know that we could have done much, much, much better. And like I have indicated, for a program like this, you probably needed about a year to plan. You uh, look at the World Cup and how it's planned, four years ahead. Uh, most international events, you plan it two, three years ahead. We had six months to put this together. And so I'll say we've managed to uh, at least plant a seed and that seed needs to be watered now and that's why we are not ending the year of return in December we want to build on it year, year of return 2.0 is gonna come beyond the return and so that we can look at how we can now hold on to some pillars people are coming in wanting investments people are coming in wanting land real estate what is the product that we are selling to them because this year we relied heavily on events but we can't organize the number of events we've organized this year, about more than 100. It's impossible. So how do we sustain the interest? The media have been very supportive, but we need to build on it. And that's what we are looking to do for 2020. One final question. It's still a discussion that is ongoing because our understanding from the word go was that it was going to be for everybody. But I, I believe there was a reshuffle just after the announcement was made in South Africa, which has gotten them to do a little bit of a rethink whether uh, the issue of people coming in and not, I don't think they have the infrastructure to contain the numbers that potentially could just go in there and decide I'm not going back. And so we've, we've, we've heard that eventually it will be open. I mean, I am a proponent of the school of thought that let's have a visa-free Africa. As Africans, we should be able to travel everywhere we go within Africa. But then because some people feel that maybe infrastructure-wise they are more developed, if you're not careful, people will just run there and then the issue of unemployment in their own destinations and all those things become thin. But I think we have a very strong working relationship with the South Africans and I believe we can sort it out.